Model Engineering for Beginners, this is part 20, cutting threads on harder metals using a thread cutting die. On screen at the moment is a good example of a Stuart 504 boiler. The 500 range of boilers were made a few years ago by Stuart. Alas, the 500 series boilers are not made anymore. But they still come up very frequently on eBay, and that's where this one came from. It doesn't belong to me, it belongs to a customer. When the customer bought this boiler from eBay, it came with a steam tap that was really a foreign object. The thread on this steam tap was nowhere near the thread in the bush on the top of the boiler. It was just held in place by a lot of PTFE tape, and that's no good at all. What comes out of the boiler bush on the top of a 504 boiler is superheated steam. On a Stuart 504 boiler, most of the pipes that hang below the boiler are water pipes, except for the centre one, which is the main steam pipe. The steam is taken from high up inside the boiler and it goes through a pipe underneath the boiler which sits on top of the fire and gets very hot and it finally outputs at this boiler bush on the top of the boiler. The thread in this boiler bush is 5 16 by 26 threads per inch and what I've been doing is using a 5 16 by 26 tap to remove any damage to the threads caused by someone forcing the incorrect thread into there. This is a Stuart Models 504 type boiler valve. And as you can see in this clip, the valve also has a female thread. I don't know the history of this valve, so I'm cleaning out the thread once again using a 5 16 by 26 threads per inch tap. And where do we go from here? Well, I need to make a stainless steel adapter. Here's a piece of stainless steel and it's 5 16 of an inch in diameter. And I'm going to use this to make a thread adapter to join the two parts together. Over now to my small Boxford lathe, the piece of stainless steel is fitted in the chuck and the first part of the job, as always, is to face across the front of it. Whenever you machine stainless steel, you must not let the lathe tool rub on it. You must keep the lathe tool moving. If you don't do that and the lathe tool rubs on the work, then it will work hard and very quickly and then it becomes very difficult to cut. The same thing applies to drilling. Keep the drill moving at all times. When drilling or turning stainless steel, some lubricant is a good idea just to keep things cool. Generally speaking, I don't use cutting lubricants in videos just so you can see what's going on, but it's a good idea with stainless steel. So far so good, I kept the drill moving and everything's okay. As I apply some steam oil to it, you can see how hot the part is. I'm going to thread this using a die in a standard die holder, not a tailstock die holder. I'm using the tailstock chuck to keep everything square. I'm using plenty of lubricant on the thread. I'm using my steam oil mixture, but it's a good idea to get some proper threading compound, which is made for the job. I've put the lathe in back gear to slow it down, and now I'm going to do the rest of the thread under power, and then show you the difference between the two threads. Even in back gear, the lathe is running too fast for this job, and the part's getting very hot, you can see the smoke. Frequently I get comments from experts, there are a lot of them out there. And there's always some expert trying to tell me how to do the job. Well, I've got a fairly good idea how to do the job. But there's a big difference between working in one's home workshop and the professional engineering industry. And here in my home workshop, when I threaded under power, look at the difference in the thread. The first part that I did by hand is okay and the second part is horrible. So I'm going to start again. If I was in a professional industry, I would possibly be using the lathe to screw cut this component. But for now, I'm just parting off the mess and I'm going to start again. This time, I'm going to cut the thread with the same die holder, with the same die, but using hand power only. Maybe you're thinking, why don't I show how to screw cut? Well, I don't do it very often. To be perfectly honest, the first screw cutting I ever did many, many years ago didn't work out well. I ended up with something that looked like a strand of DNA. Because nobody told me that if you disengage the lathe, it will not automatically follow the same thread on the next pass. But if you have a lathe with a gearbox, with the correct type of cutting tools and gauges, etc., then there's no reason why you couldn't screw cut this part. If your lathe doesn't have a gearbox, then you can just use different size change wheels. But you really need to get the maths right, and believe me, this is quicker. Especially for a beginner. If you watch these videos regularly, you will notice that whenever I'm threading in the lathe, I always remove the cutting tool. It's called health and safety, also known as common sense. 
It's really not a good idea moving parts around with your hands when they're very close to razor sharp lathe tools. I've refitted the lathe tool, this is a parting tool and I'm using it to part off the work. It's a good idea really to put something underneath the chuck to catch these parts to stop them falling into the chip tray. But as the chip tray on my lathe is usually so full of chippings the part gets a soft landing as it falls into it. I'm being lazy here, I should change the tool for a normal knife tool but I've cleaned up the end using the parting tool and then just a touch with the file. And here are the two stainless steel thread adapters that I made. I think I'll use the one on the right. Just a touch of Loctite 542 to seal the threads and in this clip I'm screwing the adapter into the tap. And after that I'm fitting a copper washer underneath the tap to seal it. And with just a tiny drop of Loctite 542 I'm screwing the entire assembly into the boiler bush at the top of the boiler. And I was lucky the washer I fitted was perfect. The tap ended up just where I needed it to be. It started to get tight at this position and all it needed was a final turn with my Barco spanner to put it into the correct position. And that's about it, the job is a success. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.